But it is the case that our assessment was at that stage that he had not broken out in terms of developing his weapons of mass destruction. Well, as, uh, the, the other thing I was going to add to this was, was that, that, of course, during this period, um, and, and, and especially from the uh, expulsion or removal of the weapons inspectors at the end of uh, 1998, um, we had this stream of intelligence about what Saddam uh, was doing. Um, and the intelligence did not say he's packed up. Maybe he didn't say that at all. I mean, we had the, we had the baseline, which I, I mentioned in my uh, memorandum to you, uh, of the uh, last uh, UNSCOM report of January 1999, uh, 200 pages long, saying, you know, this is what we've done, but this is what remains. Um, as I say, there were sort of the known knowns and this big known unknown about what had happened to that. And this uh, stream of uh, in intelligence that was coming through saying, this is, continues to be a real problem. After all, if we'd not had that, um, we could have abandoned containment as well. If we just thought it was all absolutely yeah. fine. And I, I wonder if I could, if I may, just make, because I know that obviously one of uh, Sir John, the, the, the key things you're looking at is you know, how we arrived at this and what are the lessons. There's just one other thing I wanted to add about uh, intelligence that I talk about in my memorandum. And that is in a similar sort of bracket to my observation about Suez. It's about the Falklands. Because um, th these things sit in the, in the psyche of uh, decision makers and parliamentarians, and I suggest the public. I was in the Commons uh, for the uh, Falklands. And of course, uh, the charge against uh, Peter Carrington, against Lord Carrington then, I think very unfair, but, but the charge was that he and his colleagues in the, in the Foreign Office had neglected to follow through intelligence, not taken proper notice of it. And so there was, I say, it, it, it was at a sort of unspoken level, but say alongside, as it were, the lesson of Suez, which was stay close to the Americans, there was also the lesson of the Falklands, which was take notice of intelligence. Um, can I turn now to the Prime Minister's correspondence with President Bush, and indeed beyond that, get into the question of the negotiations which you were vitally involved in with the American administration. Uh, throughout 2002. Um, but let's just start with the Prime Minister's correspondence with President Bush, which you, I'm sure, will have seen Alistair Campbell refer to the other day. Now, you saw the Prime Minister's letters, I understand, to President Bush. Did you see them after they were written, or did you see them in draft? And do you think you saw them all? Um, I. I saw some of them after they were written. I saw some of them in draft. Uh, it depended really on, on the circumstances. Um, uh, I, I, and it, I, it essentially, um, I think, partly depended on literally my physical proximity. Um, I mean, unsurprisingly, uh, I spent a lot of my time as uh, Foreign Secretary on aeroplanes and abroad. Um, I think there was I can't be absolutely certain about this. There was one occasion when I was aeroplane with the Prime Minister. And we, we talked about a memorandum that he was writing and went through uh, the draft. Um, when I was in London, I was in and out of the other side of Downing Street all the time. So, uh, so it, 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 it depended. Um, on, on your question, did I see all of them? Um, I think so, is the answer. Mm. I mean, I, it's, I'm afraid it's for your archivist to say whether I saw all of them, uh, because I don't know what the denominator is. Um, as Foreign Secretary, you presumably would have expected to see less. Yes, and, and I mean, look, I, the, the, uh, I, I never, I, I certainly never, I mean, I've, I certainly saw all the key ones. Yes, um, okay. I, I, I might just say this, I mean, I, I've, I've obviously, the, we had very good files in my private office. Um, and all of that's been made available to you, but I've also looked at... Yes, thank you for that. Thank you, that's right. Um, I thought they might... Well, I mean, it was very, very important they should be. But all that's been made available to you, and that is a complete set of all the papers that I uh, yeah. re received from Number 10. Um, I've also seen some of the Cabinet Office files, and I, I've not come across uh, a memorandum from the Prime Minister. I guess we better let you know if you find any we think you didn't uh, see, but... Um, <laughs> the, 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 there is one letter that... Um, while the text is not on the public record, the delivery of it by Sir David Manning to uh, President Bush in 
I think late July of 2002, has been described in, in public and in print. Uh, do you recall that particular letter? It was a pretty important one, end of July or so, 2002? Uh, yes, I th yes, I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've got a number of them in my head. Yes. Uh, I, th I think I do, yes. Uh, in that letter, or those letters generally, were you entirely comfortable with the way that the Prime Minister was expressing himself to the President? Well, if, if I mean, it's, some of the some extent, this will be easier, I think, if, if there are... It would be much easier. ...private sessions, uh, but well, anyway... It would be much easier if we had them in front of well, us, I, but, there, the but, but I, if I say so, I mean, that's obviously not a matter for, for me. Um, uh, I happen, however, to, to place a high value on the confidentiality of relations with foreign states, and uh, you know, I, I, I just do. Um, so I, if I can just take you, if I may say, we, you started talking about David Manning. I don't, David Manning had been a personal friend for 20 years before he and I uh, ended up working closely together. I had a very, very close relationship, uh, still do, uh, with David Manning, um, and we used to talk all the time. So uh, just on your, you know, what's the denominator? I can't say whether there was a... Uh, a secret piece of uh, paper that I never saw, but I don't think I did, and uh, as well as... My question was whether you were happy with what the Prime Minister was putting as as on those bits of paper. Yeah, being happy with it. Um, mainly, would I have written the memorandum in the same way? Probably not, because I'm a different person. Um, and um, it, it, what, what we're dealing with here was a, 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 a personal... Uh, relationship which was of profound importance to the country and might I make this point uh, here I do sp not speaking for the Prime Minister but offering this as, uh, as an explanation I mean, you've got you know, a real opportunity to ask him next week but it he had, was very close to the Democratic uh, administration of Bill Clinton indeed I, I went with him uh, on his first government to government visit to Washington which was in February of 1998, which happened to be the week that the Monica Lewinsky uh, affair um, got a, a wider audience, um, and he, he, I mean, he he became very, was very close and very supportive of Bill Clinton. Um, that led to considerable sort of suspicion by the uh, new Bush administration about whether this socialist. Uh, uh, Tony Blair and the rest of us, I mean, worse socialists or better socialists behind him, uh, could be trusted. And he had to uh, build up a relationship. Now, I had to do so with Colin Powell, but it was you know, a little bit easier. So I, I don't think you can criticize uh, Tony Blair for trying to work out where this chap was coming from and trying to get alongside him. And what I, I do say, too, is that you need to judge the result of, of this kind of uh, approach with his purpose. And he went there, as I was talking to Colin Powell then and, and, and in the summer as well, to try and persuade the Bush administration to go down the UN route. And, and that was what was agreed in the end. I think 